Hello everyone and welcome to another live video chat with my very good friend and colleague and mentor in life in all areas when it comes to training, Alex Parker Larkin. Alex, hello, how are you? I'm very good, thank you Lucy. How are you? I'm very well, thank you today. And thank you so much Alex for joining us. Now I know you very well Alex because obviously you are Polar and Tweed's head trainer but lots of people um, who maybe haven't worked with us in the training area don't necessarily come into contact with you. So I know you've had the most incredible career and I wondered if you could bring everyone up to speed who's listening and watching a little bit about yourself and your amazing career to date. Sure. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. So my career um, started when I was 18. So I'll start a little bit before that. I started off as a chambermaid uh, in a hotel, in a boutique hotel. And I also did some waitressing uh, in a local pub. So kind of just very basic. Um, and then I finished my A-levels at college and thought I would take a little bit of time out. Um, little did I know that my father thought otherwise and said, no, you need to get a job. You're not just going to hang around here for the summer. Um, and actually it was very good friends of family who work in the super yacht industry and they still do now actually. Um, and they said, well, we can get you a job on a yacht if you like. Um, not knowing what it was, I thought it sounded fun, why not? And within two weeks I was off and I went to the south of Spain and I joined a large super yacht. Um, and I was, so I was 18 and off I went and um, I didn't come back, uh, well, I came back 11 years later, but I came back. <laughs> <laughs> so yes, um, it, it just, for me, it, it became my life um, and something that I just really got into and really enjoyed and felt very passionate about it and really enjoyed my time at sea. Wow. Yes. Wow. So, so you, you sort of fell into it by accident. It just sort yeah. of happens that yeah. it just, it, you know, sort of landed on your doorstep or landed at the port um, yeah. and, and, and on you jumped and off you went. So for people listening and watching who, who don't know about super yachts, what is a super yacht? Okay, so a super yacht um, is anything from 24 meters, don't ask me a beat, um, but anything larger than that counts as a super yacht. And they're huge now, they really are. I mean, there's 150 mega yachts built every year. Um, wow. So whilst it seems that there's always a friend in the port and it seems a relatively small world. There are so many of them out there. So there's lots of jobs to be had for everybody. And they're, they're, they're absolutely huge. I know because I, I go to the Monaco Yacht Show and you, know, you don't realise the size until you stand next to it. And, and you just think, my gosh, this is a private floating world, you know, that people are living in. And of course, they have to have the crew on board to to run them you, you, you can't yeah. just have it's not like a property that you could potentially lock up and and yeah. leave for a few weeks yeah. I mean I assume you have staff on board all the time unless it's literally out of the water yeah. is, is that correct yeah absolutely it's one of those big things that actually everybody asks about is well what do you do when you don't have guests on board but you know this is this is a full-time job it's five days a week minimum without guests on board with full-time crew some people go down to like a skeleton crew over a period perhaps if they're in the mediterranean and they don't get used um, throughout those winter months um, but if there are two season boats and maybe they go to the caribbean then they will be on full crew all year round um, and yeah it, it needs maintaining to the highest standards you know the standards are everybody calls it seven stars you know it's, it's way above it's you know it's cleaning with a, a cotton bud and toothpicks and you know one area will take you a whole day which just wow. seems absurd in our world and in, in, in our houses um, but it's just yeah it, the, the boats don't see dirt <laughs> no, no 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 absolutely well you have to protect the investment of of the boat which yeah. is vast vast sums of money so for people who that have perhaps have never been at sea never been on even a cruise ship or you know been on a dinghy you know what is life at sea what is life at sea actually like you know did you get seasick you know what, what, what tell us about what, what it's like Okay, so to answer your first question, do I get seasick? Um, <laughs> occasionally, I have been known to be a little ill, um, but having learned from that, so somebody uh, advised me many years ago to eat bananas um, because they taste the same when they come up. <laughs> um, and that's something I've always passed on to everybody. Um, 
But the big thing that I've always remembered is to have a big meal before I set sail. So anytime we know that we're leaving. So if we know that we're leaving the port, the, the dock at 7 a.m., I would be up at 6 having a large breakfast because you will feel ill if you've got an empty stomach. Um, and that's this, you know, you've just got to prepare yourself for it. However, you do still have to work through it. You know, you may have guests on board, but regardless of that, you still have watch keeping duties and a regular day. So even if you're going across the Atlantic, it's still a normal eight, nine hour day minimum. Um, yeah. And, so and you know, with seasickness as well, I think um, people get you get you get their sea legs right. I mean, that's the expression that they they get used yeah. to it. And and I'm not great on on the water I mean I'm a scuba diver so I like being under the water but I don't yeah. like being on the water yeah. and um I was very lucky to go to the Cocos Islands for my honeymoon oh, and um, that's where sort of Jurassic Park was in, you know inspired yeah. Steven Spielberg to make that movie and and it's it's a two-day boat trip off Costa Rica um you yeah. go to this island it's in the middle of nowhere you live on the boat because the island itself is a nature reserve and so okay. we were on the boat for about 10 days and um, we were invited to walk around the island to see the nature. And, you know, the, it's quite phenomenal to be on this island that sort of time has forgotten. Anyway, so I got off the boat and I got land sickness. Oh, so the yeah. land was moving and I was yeah. like, oh my gosh, put me back on the boat. And it was the most bizarre thing. So I never true. knew you could get land sickness. <laughs> I know, yeah, it's absolutely right. You just get so used to the movement that when you go on land, you just don't know what's happening because the world is still. <laughs> <laughs> so, so bizarre. So obviously, aside from seasickness, and I love the tip about yeah. bananas, I did not know that. Um, <laughs> you know, what's, what's life like? You know, you're obviously living in quite small quarters. You must be yeah. working quite long hours. Tell us the sort of not glamorous side of it and then okay. tell us the glamorous side. Okay, so the non-glamorous side um, is, as you mentioned, so close quarters, which there's, you know, for and against of everything. So yes, you become a family, um, but, you know, especially on these large, large yachts where they've got 45 plus crew, you can't always get along with everybody. You're not really best friends with them, but you do still have to get along. So you really have to be quite flexible and you have to have a good personality and a good sense of humour. Um, but yeah, it's small quarters and you generally share a cabin with another crew member, um, mostly of the same sex, but sometimes it could be perhaps a stewardess with a deckhand because that's all that the cabin arrangements are. So you have to be prepared to live with that. Um, you also have to be quite tidy and respectful of others because there's just not room for the mess. So it, it's a different mindset that you have to get into. Mm. And I think especially because it is more of a younger generation that come into the industry, um, that they might not necessarily have been that tidy at home and then come into a situation where they just have to be quite regimental with it. Um, so that takes quite a bit of adjusting to. So, yeah. Um, but And I know, mean, even the, even the captain might be in the, a small quarter and live yeah. almost in a tiny, tiny space. It's not that senior ranking members of the staff get bigger rooms because no. there might not actually be the space to have that. No, it, exactly. So, you know, different size yachts. So the mega yachts, they're, they're quite separate um, and they are slightly bigger for senior ranking crew members. But the smaller ones, they're pretty much all the same. Um, and, and you literally can hear everything and everyone next door. So if you've got somebody that snores, yeah, it's going to keep you awake. So earplugs are, are a must and an, an eye mask because you work long hours. So you may get an hour or two break out of a very, very long day when you've got guests on board. So if you need to take that break, you do need to sleep in that time. There's, there's very little else to do because you may be at sea. So most people take that hour, hour and a half if they're lucky, um, and, and they literally set their alarm, put the eye mask on and sleep for that time, wake up, have a shower, freshen up, get in clean uniform again and then get back to you know to their day's work so yes it's long hours um and with guests on board obviously it's an even longer hours so it, it's something that you're on a rotor so it does change and your duties change um but you do have to be prepared to work long hours yeah absolutely absolutely so it's, it's an intense job and i think perhaps people get seduced by the glamour and the glitz and the you know 
the multi multi million pound boat that they're working on but actually like you say it's quite an intense job and and not suited to everyone you've got to have that you know strength of character to to work those hours and deal with those close quarters and 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 also obviously at the heart of it be aware of safety and yeah. and care because you know you're in potentially a risky situation if something goes wrong much more so than on land when the fire brigade can turn up you know you, you don't have yeah. that luxury on, on a yacht so but obviously lots of people do go into this world and you obviously spent a very long time working at sea so so tell us about the glamorous side tell us what what excites you and, and excited you for many years about working in this world Okay, so it's got, number one has got to be the travel. So I love traveling, always have, still do. I still get itchy feet, especially now as we're in lockdown, because I can't go anywhere. Um, but I, I'd say, you know, the glamorous side is definitely the travel. Um, you just get to see the most amazing places and seeing somewhere from sea is so different as well. And if you do get time off, you can get to explore, you know, that area, the country, um, and, and you can start new things, you can learn to dive and you know that you, you're just the world's your oyster literally um, and it's fantastic in that way so yes that's one glamorous side of it to um, yeah you get to live a little bit like them so you have to live you have to live in the crew area so you don't get to use the rest of the boat um, but you do get to come into those nice ports like in Saint-Tropez and you still get to wander around and, and absorb that atmosphere um, so that's a really glamorous side to it because not many people get to do that you know you get to go perhaps you take part in the Monaco Grand Prix is a massive one where crew love to be involved in that you know you literally have to stand on the on the aft deck with your ear defenders on but you've taken the atmosphere so whilst you're working and you're serving and making sure that everything's tip top you're still involved in it and another example is like the Cannes Film Festival which is amazing because you just get to see all the celebrities and all past all the glitz and glamour so I'd say that's a really really positive glamorous side to it where you're sort of absorbed partly in that life um, yeah. And also you, you get paid well for it, you know, it's a good job, you, you don't have outgoings, You're, most people at a young age, their only outgoing is their mobile phone bill. But that's pretty good, isn't it? You know, everything gets paid for you, your food, your toiletries, your uniform. So, you know, you can save really well. So if it's something that perhaps is just a short term thing, where you're doing it in between maybe going to university or something else, mm. you could really save you know, and, yeah. and set yourself up at a very young age, um, which would be very sensible. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, no, it sounds, it sounds phenomenal and amazing experience to have gone through a journey, a life journey, um, sort of shaping the person you are now and, and, and giving you that strength of character to travel the world because not everyone gets those opportunities and to be able to do it as part of your job is, it, it's such a, such a unique position to be in um, and, and, and really, really amazing. But, you obviously then came back to the UK, you started a family, you became land-based as it were, um, and then you went into private homes, consulting, training. Tell us a little bit about that sort of transition from sea to land. Um, yes, yeah, so it's actually quite a difficult transition, I would say, um, but I think that it, it's it's a lot better now, even in the last five or 10 years. Um, transitioning perhaps 15 years ago was very difficult for yacht crew because nobody recognized what they did. Nobody really heard of the industry. So it was, you know, it was very unheard of. So your skills, whilst they are transferable completely um, and actually even higher level, um, people didn't recognize that. And I remember coming back and thinking, well, perhaps I could do something land-based. And I got hold of a couple of agencies um, and they just, literally you know close the door in my face mm. um and i find that amazing so i know that you know obviously polo and tweed are amazing at that because they completely recognize and understand that people have worked on yachts are probably like the best people to come and they work are in. absolutely the best they i mean you know don't get me wrong land-based background people are also can be incredible amazing. but the, the, yeah. the yacht crew have that attitude they have the eye for detail like you were talking about with cleaning with the cotton buds and the toothbrushes and the picks and you know that level of detail and also you know they're tireless they will work long hours and you know not be after six hours oh I need to sit down and have a break you know and, and, and there's nothing wrong with that no, but no. The, the attitude that yacht crew have in transferable skills I mean 
I would hire a yacht person to work in my house any day. And I, I'm a big advocate for that. So, I mean, it's so disappointing that those agents didn't have that, that foresight, yeah. but you know, as an agency owner now, I see that and value yeah. that and love it's yacht crew joining my books. I, I, the more, the, the more, the better. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so, so, I mean, obviously I came back, started a family, so I did take some time out. Um, I was quite happy not to work for, for a while, and then I got itchy feet. Um, we decided that we would build a house, so that kept us very busy. Um, as you know, Lucy, but obviously <laughs> nobody else knows, or some people do. My husband works overseas, he still works on yachts. Um, so I'm very much here on my own a lot of the time. So um, building a house was an, another really good achievement that I could do, and, and another one to put onto my belt. I was very happy um, with that and, and living in our beautiful house now. We're very happy. But after that, I got itchy feet again um, and I really needed to get back into it. So I've done various stuff. So I've worked um, for a friend of mine, her crew agency in um, Fort Lauderdale. So I would do some online stuff, which was great because I could do that when the children weren't at school. Um, and I've also helped with holiday lets and so managing stuff and then consulting um, in private houses uh, and I, even some small boutique hotels in, in the area actually that I've mm. helped with. So yes, um, I still do that, still do training and consultancy um, and obviously head trainer for Polo and Tweed as well. Um, but I also do a lot of stuff with, with yachts still. Um, still yeah. But yes, the skills are transferable completely and I feel you know completely happy in both areas um, because, because of that reason. I've just set up well from that. Mm. So. Yeah. yeah, no, I mean, it's phenomenal and, and, and well done, you know, for doing that transition from, from sea to land when it was more challenging to do that. Yeah. Um, like we talk about, it's easier now, but you must have seen and witnessed the most incredible things through your career today. Can, can you think of a t maybe a funny or an unusual story you could share with us? Good question. Um, so I, I don't know. I have lots, really. It's really hard to pin it down. Um, I'll give you a few of them. So I remember... Uh, I worked for a lovely Italian family um, on a super yacht and they traveled around the world. They loved diving. They were very passionate about what they did and they carried a helicopter on board. Um, and when we were in Cuba, uh, we were lucky enough. So we were anchored off and they took the helicopter ashore uh, to go and explore. And then they were being driven around by a, like a organized private tour guide. Um, but being super rich that they are, um, they still needed a chaperone. So I was really lucky to be picked for that one. But I, literally, Lucy, I had to um, go in the helicopter, which is great, amazing, such fun. Um, but I was there to pour the water and serve some fruit. <laughs> so yes, um, it, it kind of sticks in my mind that the only reason I got to go on that journey was actually because they still needed somebody to hand out water bottles and to get through and the chef had, had uh, packed for them <laughs> but still I mean what a cool experience to go on despite yeah. you know still like you say working and being there yeah. to, to help help the owners of, of the yacht etc but you know to make their experience perfect yes. um but you got to to be part of it which is yeah very cool very cool yeah no, it was great. <laughs> Amazing. Yeah. So, so when you when you sort of look back at your your career and now your land based career with 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 obviously you you are a trainer, so you obviously mm. believe in training as well. But you know, w what would be your advice on people wanting to go into the super yacht world or wanting to work in domestic service in households, um, VIP, high net worth families, etc. What what would you sort of say your top tips are for getting into that world? Because you just fell into it very luckily. I did. Um, I did. How, how would someone else approach it? Okay, well, I mean, obviously they are, there's recruitment agencies and that's, that is the best way to go um, because they are there to help you and support you. Um, as, as you know, running it yourself, it's the, there's so many agencies um, and you really have to go with the people that work for you um, because they're going to look out for your interests and I, I would very much go with that. It's very hard to recommend agencies um, and I do recommend Poland to eat because I know that I get this one-to-one -one contact um, and everybody loves the feedback. Everybody on our training courses, the number one thing that they say is that, you know, 
the feedback we've got and the communication that you've had beforehand is just you know phenomenal and you know Pony and Tweed are great little family in that way that whilst they're expanding massively um, they still have that personal one-to-one -one experience so that's a really good way to start obviously you need to be prepared to work hard um, and you have to be flexible because plans change whether you're land based or whether you're on a yacht um, people you know the people that you work for so ultra high net worth people generally travel a lot um, so their plans change all the time and if that doesn't work for you that's going to be very difficult um, and also you need to be somebody that likes to please you know it's the hospitality industry um, it's, it's no different from working in a cafe and a restaurant in that mindset that you have to want to be there um, and if you don't then that's not really the industry for you so I'd say that really assess who you are as a person and what you want out of it and therefore you can then go to agencies to say this is what I'm looking for um, and you know they'll tell you and I'm sure you do um, you, you pick out pretty pretty quickly if somebody is the right person for that yeah, it's spotting that potential and and that's something that, that you know, Polar and Tweed have developed that you've been a big part of when you, you came on board and, and became head trainer is is spotting that develop that, that potential in people and honing it and giving them the confidence to shine within that. Because, you know, as you as you well know, but for people listening, you know, we have group training where people come to us and train every month um, we have private training where someone will call us and say you know come to our home come to our hotel come to our yacht come to our private jet train the staff in situ and then we have recently launched the e-learning e-learning but you know with the the private training there's so much that you always are saying to us when you give us your feedback after you've done the training days is is spotting the potential in staff and often it's lacking of confidence yeah. it's lacking of that foresight to know how to approach situations. They might have the skill of how to iron the shirt, but if they haven't got time management, if they haven't got the confidence to do it and execute it really well, then it all starts to break down. So I think we've both realized over the years working together, how much the confidence someone gets with training is, is, is so important, so vital to their career progression. Yeah, I totally agree with you. And, and like you say, we, we're always having this conversation. And the biggest thing is confidence. So people may be in a situation where they're in a good job. Um, and this training that, you know, that we can offer just reaffirms what, what they know um, in some situations. But it may be that they've learned something completely new. And, you know, the, the amount of people we've had on course, I've had people, as you know, that have been sent on, on the courses that, by perhaps a principal slightly reluctant to do it and within about three hours they're so happy that they've come on it because they, they take it as perhaps a criticism of their work and it's not you know we're always learning and that's the one you know big thing that I always say that every job you go into especially in the private service industry no two jobs are the same um, and so you'll always learn something new so if you have that training then you've got the basics with you like you say so time management delegation communication all of those things yeah. you can put into place and use that to work to your advantage and just make wherever you're working a really successful run business at the end of the day it still has to be run like, like a business so it has to be quite regimental in that way absolutely absolutely and 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 you know that crosses over into all our training um as as you know but for people listening we we do yacht management training we do house management training we've got housekeeper training um silver service training which is everything to do with food and beverage and how to pour a glass of champagne and party and events etiquette and then we've also been um teaching butler training we've been developing our etiquette training and you know the etiquette training brings to us businessmen business women you know people who want to know how to behave in different cultures how to eat eat at a you know a posh restaurant you know all these different people are coming to us they're not necessarily working in the industry they just want to have that confidence and that skills to either run their own home or to go to a wonderful party and know how to eat do you out eat from the inside in outside in you know which way do you eat you yeah. know all these things that that our training enhances um, and, and it was quite interesting we had a student come to us recently that 
is, is working in the domestic industry and she is a housekeeper, but she said one of the things she really struggles with is, is, is sort of etiquette behind, you know, if she has to pick up the telephone because the, the principal's out and she has to pick up the phone, how does she answer the phone? What happens when there's a guest? How does she open the door? So actually she did our butler training because she, she doesn't want to be a butler. That's not her career path, but the skills of a butler transfer directly into yeah, her work. Yeah, they do. I, in fact, I'd, I'd say that with all of the courses that you run, is that you, you can get so much out of each course. Um, and people that have you know, been doing it years and still say, oh, wow, yeah, I didn't realise that. Or that's a really good part of it. So, yeah, they are completely transferable. Pretty much all the courses, I'd say, are for everybody. Um, and it doesn't matter what section you're in, whether you're in a yacht or a private household, whether you're in an interior department or housekeeper or house manager, you'll still learn it. So, you know, even for a house manager, I would still recommend doing the housekeeping course because how, how can you manage the housekeepers if you haven't got a clue on, on what they should be cleaning with or what the rotor or schedule should be? You know, you've got to get in there and, and get your hands dirty to find that out. But if you, if you do the course, it gives you so much insight to it. So, yes. Yeah. Yeah, no, absolutely. And as you know, we've, we've, we've launched the e-learning training now and, and people can access that from around the world, which I find so exciting because, you know, Brilliant. American and Middle Eastern and anywhere you are in the world, you can now access our training at a fraction of the price and, and put yourself through it and learn what you would learn on a group course. Of course, the group courses and the private training is amazing because they have yeah. you, they have our human, <laughs> human yeah. being trainers yeah. there. But, you know, <laughs> not everyone has the element of time, although um, we have lots of it at the moment. You know, you, you might not be able to get on a plane and come to us and, and you might be limited with budget. So, you know, what, what excites you about the e-learning and, and, of course, online training that you've been doing for us? Yeah, I think it's brilliant. I'm really excited about the e-learning and I think it's come at exactly the right time. And, you know, obviously we, we've been doing a lot of online training anyway, so I do lots of one-to-one, -one, um, which is, is fantastic. Um, but the e-learning platform is, is, is brilliant because obviously you can be anywhere in the world, but not only that, they can do it in their own time. Um, and so it, it may be something that maybe you're just not sure whether you want to dip into that industry or not. Um, and I think for a, a small investment, it's worth taking those courses. And then that really reaffirms, yes, that, that's what I want to do. Um, and, and you learn something on the way, you know, and so that's mm. your starting point. But it's not just it's not just for people like that. It could be people that are already in the industry, um, whether it be in hotels or in private houses or even on super yachts that have kind of fallen into the job. Um, they're doing very well, but maybe those standards need to be higher. Um, and well, like you, right? When you were 18, you fell into the job. Yeah. And, and I mean, you, you trial, trial by fire, you know, yeah. silver service, off you go, thinking, oh my gosh, oh, I really did silver it. service. Absolutely. I had a situation. So the first yacht that I worked on, um, it, they were running, it was the Riders Cup um, mm. many years ago. Um, and we were doing all of the events on board and we had a long banqueting table inside. I think it was about 24, which is quite large for a yacht. Because normally it's about 12. Um, and so we were serving and whilst I'd done serving in the pub, um, hadn't really done anything else and thought, oh, I'm sure I can carry three plates, um, which now, now I know you can never do because that's just a very but I thought that that would be the right thing to do is kind of stack it all up. And, and I just remember things going flying. I and mean, I took out a tray um, without a silver tray with a bottle of champagne on it and, and glasses without any liner whatsoever. So it was kind of scooting and sliding everywhere. Nobody told me, nobody had taught me, nobody passed that knowledge on. They just kind of said, okay, well, you're the right fit. You can go here and now you need to do this. So, you know what, if I'd had that, that knowledge beforehand, then yes, I would have grabbed it. I, I, we didn't have that, you know, this was over 20 years ago, and there wasn't that there. There's so, yeah. One, there wasn't training, so there wasn't the face-to-face -face anyway. And two, yeah. if there was an e-learning system, I would have been on it because I could have been able to take that job, but do that e-learning in my own time. Yeah, no, so, absolutely, absolutely. But I mean, what an, what an amazing career you've had. I mean, the life stories you've had, the life journey you've been on, what you can share with your children and, and the, the, the values that you have as a human being now is, I mean, it's, it's amazing. And I, and I love working with you and I'm, I'm so pleased that you're, you're part of the Polo and Sweet family because, you know, I really, <laughs> yeah, we are a good team. We, I, I, I really value Alex 
but you know thank you i could talk to you all day about this and, and i'm sure our listeners <laughs> yes, could listen as well about all the super yacht worlds but of course if people want to get in touch with alex they can reach out to us polo and tweed um our website polo and tweed.com and you can email us or drop us a text or whatever works um and of course alex is available for private bookings she runs the majority of our group courses and she also consults on on the e-learning as well and and she's always developing things with us so when when a private client comes to us with a particular concern or challenge alex and i develop the program you know we work with the team at polo and tweed headquarters although at the moment in lockdown we're all spread out everywhere but you know we, alex leads leads the training in the direction we need it to go for for our amazing clients around the world so alex thank you so much for your time today it's been such a pleasure to see you and, and thank you for sharing everything with us absolute pleasure lucy it was it was lovely it's nice to have that contact as well to see people um and i'm glad that we, we've got this time that we can share this with other people so yeah it's very exciting times for the opponent so thank you lucy thank you alex have a lovely day too.